Why Twitter chose Ghana for their regional hub. In November 2019, Twitter CEO Jack Patrick Dorsey tweeted from the airport in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, that he would be moving to Africa for up to six months in 2020. His month-long tour of the continent, which included stops in Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, and Ethiopia, had come to an end, and the billionaire was feeling nostalgic. Africa will define the future, especially the Bitcoin one, he wrote. Dorsey then resigned as CEO two years and two days after announcing his second trip to Africa. We never found out where in Africa he was referring. To Westerners, Twitter looked like an acidic, hate-fueled, raging dumpster fire under Dorsey's reign from 2015 to 2021. But what Westerners got was Twitter's platinum version. It's the version created by people who take their civic problems seriously because they're their problems as well. Dorsey's legacy in Africa is even more neglectful and hypocritical than in the West. The former CEO arrogance and negligence allowed misinformation and abuse to spread across the continent. The current Nigerian government has long been concerned about the country's use of Twitter. The local NSARS protest began on Twitter and gained traction in 2020, when 48 million tweets were sent in 10 days. Dorsey treated Nigeria in particular as a relationship of convenience. Many Nigerians applauded his tweets in 2020 urging people to donate to efforts to end a state regime of police brutality and SARS protest. However, his support for this was inconsistent, as Twitter appeared to ignore repeated calls from Nigerian journalists, researchers, and activists to flag or ban many scams and misleading claims about end SARS protest and other abuses that were rampant on the platform. Welcome to Think Rich Africa, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business, and personal development content to inform, motivate, and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe entrepreneurship, rather than global pity, is the key to Africa's growth and development. So, if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. On 5 June 2021, the Nigerian government officially banned Twitter from operating in the country after the social media platform deleted tweets from Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari warning the southeastern people of Nigeria, primarily Igbo people, of a potential repeat of the 1967 Biafran civil war due to the ongoing insurgency in southeastern Nigeria. The deletion of the president's tweets was cited as a factor in the decision, but it was ultimately based on a litany of problems with the social media platform in Nigeria, where misinformation and fake news spread through it have had real-world violent consequences, citing the platform's continued use for activities that threaten Nigeria's corporate existence. Twitter announced in late June 2021 that it would begin talks with the Nigerian government about the platform's suspension. The negotiations started in July 2021. On September 15, 2021, Nigerian Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohamed, stated that the government of Nigeria will lift the Twitter ban in a few days. The minister stated that Twitter provided an update on their discussions with them, stating that they were productive and respectful. On October 1, 2021, President Muhammadu Buhari, in his Independence Day broadcast, said Twitter must meet the Nigerian government's five conditions before the suspension of the social media platform will be lifted. The conditions includes Twitter must pay attention to national security and cohesion, registration, physical presence and representation in Nigeria, fair taxation, dispute resolution, and local content. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey wrapped up a whirlwind tour of Africa in 2019 by committing to spend several months in the continent in 2020. Now it appears that his company will be the one to make the first move. Twitter announced its first physical presence in Africa, a regional headquarters in Accra, Ghana, in April 2021, nearly 15 years after it first started up on the continent. Dorsey tweeted alongside an emoji of the Ghanaian flag, Twitter is now present on the continent. The decision to open an office in Ghana is based on the country's AFCFTA negotiations, internet access, and online and offline free speech policies, according to Twitter. 
As a champion for democracy, Ghana is a supporter of free speech, online freedom, and the open internet, of which Twitter is also an advocate, Twitter said in a statement announcing the decision. The social media giant also cited Ghana's hosting of the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade Area FCFTA, as another reason for moving there, saying it aligns with its ambition to establish a presence in the region that will support our efforts to improve and tailor our service across Africa. Ghana President Nana Akufo Addo expressed delight at Twitter's decision to open its African headquarters in the country. The choice of Ghana as HQ for Twitter's Africa operations is excellent news, Akufo Addo tweeted. Government and Ghanaians welcome very much this announcement and the confidence reposed in our country. The Ghanaian president disclosed that he met with Dorsey virtually on April 7, where they both reached an agreement on Twitter's activity in Ghana. Akufo Addo said the contract is the start of a beautiful partnership between Twitter and Ghana, which is critical for the development of Ghana's hugely important tech sector. These are exciting times to be in and to do business in Ghana. Twitter's physical presence in Africa will undoubtedly attract many African tech innovators. According to a report published by the Africa Report, Africa now has over 600 tech hubs, ranging from incubators and accelerators to co-working spaces. According to a joint report by Brighter Bridges and Afri Labs, Africa has 643 tech hubs. While the startup world is all about survival of the fittest, it is also a community-driven environment. Twitter has already announced that it is forming a team in Ghana to be more immersed in the rich and vibrant communities that drive the conversations that happen every day across the continent. Twitter announced job openings for a variety of positions earlier this month, ranging from product and engineering to design, marketing, and communications. Nigerian city of Lagos Twitter's announcement that it will establish its first Africa base in Ghana, West Africa, has sparked heated debate among Nigerian users of the social media app, reigniting the two countries' long-running rivalry, colloquially known as the Jollof Wars. Many Nigerians believe Twitter's decision is a slap in the face to the continent's largest economy, which is experiencing rapid growth and investment in its tech scene. While some Nigerians blamed Twitter's choice of Ghana over Nigeria on an unfavorable business environment. Another commenter defended Twitter's decision. It's unbelievable seeing Nigerians throwing a tantrum because Twitter went to Ghana. The lack of awareness of how bad things are in the country, the bloated sense of entitlement, the unhinged expectations that everyone should accept Nigeria's dysfunction. Incredible, she stated. In 2018, Facebook opened its first community hub space in Africa in Nigeria's commercial city, Lagos. While announcing plans last year to open an operational office also in Lagos, but for tech investors such as Ian Alawa Aboyji, there are lessons to be learned if Nigeria will continue to attract much needed foreign investment. We have to think carefully about the reasons why Twitter chose Ghana, not necessarily in the context of whether we want to bring Twitter to Nigeria or not, but in the context of what it will take for us to remain a competitive destination for investors. Aboyji told CNN, We need to start thinking very carefully about enhancing democracy and the rule of law, freedom of speech, and most importantly, our role in enabling the Africa Free Trade Agreement. It's not enough for us to just be a big market. We have next door to us, a very competitive neighbor, who's doing all the right things to make itself the hub of West Africa he added. Twitter simply chose a more productive market to run its Africa operations. According to another Nigerian tech entrepreneur and investor, Bosun Tijani, while Nigeria has a huge market that Twitter would love to target, the business environment here is quite demanding. It's strenuous. The cost of running a business here is high. But with the AFCFTA's single market agreement, which Africa is signed up to, a company like Twitter can choose to set up shop in a small market like Ghana that gives the best opportunity for it to operate and still serve the Nigerian market, said Tajani, who heads a tech innovation lab, CC Hub. <music> Nevertheless, Ghana is indeed the future of Africa. From tourism to tech, 
Ghana has been actively courting investors from the diaspora, and in particular African Americans, some of whom were given citizenship and encouraged to return to their roots. Ghana also ranked as the 43rd most peaceful country in the world in the 2020 Global Peace Index, placing 104 spots ahead of Nigeria, which grapples with Boko Haram insurgency and periodic outbreaks of violence. Despite the fact that Twitter is now available in Africa, its presence is uncertain. Twitter's job openings in Accra were overwhelmingly in advertising, engineering, and communications. It is unclear how many members of Twitter's trust and safety or platform integrity teams will be sent. In fact, Twitter's sub-Saharan Africa policy management team is based in Europe. Like Google and Facebook before it, it quickly became clear that this new development would have little to do with assisting Africans in defending their free speech or opposing authoritarian governments. Twitter's Africa headquarters are not about Africans. It is essentially a colonial outpost, erected to ensure that the data and money extracted by Twitter from the continent were not lost. We do know that his arrogance and failures in three of the four countries he first visited will have a significant impact on his legacy in Africa. And the limits of this office would be tested time and time again later in the year, as Twitter was used to sow discontent around several African countries. Thank you for watching. If there are any tips you think should be on this list but is not, leave a comment, let us know. Help our channel grow. We hope this video has been helpful to you. Support us by liking the video, subscribing, and turning on your notification.